So far we've taken our backend and transformed it to be type safe using GraphQL Nexus to generate our schema and our types using some code generators. We're going to do something very similar on the front end. I installed a bunch of dependencies and they all come from the same kind of libraries, the GraphQL code generator libraries. Just to give you an idea of how this works, I'm going to show you their website. Basically what they're going to do is take your GraphQL schema and turn it into TypeScript. If you're following along, this is exactly what is happening. We started off with TypeScript and then we generated uh, some GraphQL using GraphQL Nexus. We're now going to take this generated schema and then we're going to change it back into TypeScript. So we're actually going between the languages twice. There's a lot of code generation going here. If you feel uncomfortable with this, uh, don't worry too much. I also feel fairly uncomfortable with this. And I'll tell you a little bit more about how I feel about all this code generation after we finish getting everything working. For now, let's go ahead and update our front end to make it nice and type safe. So what I did was install a bunch of dependencies. I also created this GraphQL code gen file. It has a bunch of options you don't really need to know about. The important ones are up here. Firstly, you need to specify your GraphQL schema. I already did that. And I also told, told it where to look for my GraphQL queries. They're going to be inside of my view documents. The next thing we're going to do is head over to package.json. I added an extra command. I added this code gen command. It does GraphQL code gen. It takes my configuration file, which I just showed you, and it's going to spit out a bunch of types. Let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm going to go ahead and run yard code gen, and it's hopefully going to generate uh, something. It actually generated nothing. That's because I haven't defined any of my types apparently, or I've made a mistake. It's incredibly difficult to read in this tiny little terminal, but you can see here it's saying unknown argument book input on the field mutation.create book. Have you made a mistake? So let's go ahead and see if we can fix up that mistake. I'm guessing what's happened here is I accidentally changed one of the names of my mutations. Let's jump inside of here. I think I changed this from book input to input. Let's just go ahead and double check that. If we head over to GraphQL, yes, it's called input here. So what I'm going to need to do is update that one. So let's go ahead and do that. This is actually already a good thing. It's taking my GraphQL schema and I realized this one doesn't exist. So we already have a little bit more type safety. Just to confirm what's going on, I'm going to head over here and show you. You can see here it's supposed to be called input and I called it book input instead. Let's go ahead and fix that one up and call it input. With a bit of luck, this is now going to work. Let's save it off and give it a try. If I head back here and run the yarn code gen command again, hopefully it's going to run successfully and it did. Let's go ahead and see what it generated. I'm going to come over here and look for my generated code. It should be around here somewhere inside of here source generated GraphQL. And just to confirm what's going on here, what GraphQL code generator is going to do is look inside of all my view files. It's going to look for this GraphQL tag and it's going to take these and generate type definitions for me. And that's exactly what it's done over here on the left. It is kind of readable. If we scroll down here, you can sort of see what's going on. We have our mutations here with our title, uh, title type and we have the mutation, some queries, and then we have these huge big documents here, which are going to give us nice type safety. I'm going to show you that right now. The first thing we're going to update is not create book. We're going to update show books. Let's head in there and do that now. If we scroll down a little bit here, we can see we have our query here with absolutely no type safety and we're getting no type safety up here either. What we're going to do is now replace this one. I'm actually going to leave this here, but what we're going to do is pass in something different. We're not going to pass in show books. Let's go ahead and import from our generated file and see what we have inside of generated slash GraphQL. With a bit of luck, we're going to have our show books document, and this is going to be our type safe query. We're taking this query here and generating some type safe code. I can go ahead now and pass in show book document instead, and this is going to give me proper type safety. Just to show you what's going on, I'm going to do show books dot data dot value, and we're now getting type safety. We have our app here, and we're also going to have our book type as well. And that's going to give us an array of books. For example, I can grab the first one and we're going to get ID and title as well. So now if we scroll up here, we're actually going to get an error. And the reason for this is app is apparently going to be nullable. So what I need to do is go ahead and say that this can be null and this can also be null as well. And this is now going to work correctly. Just to confirm that app really is nullable, I'm going to head back to my GraphQL interface and check it out over here. We have query and we have app. And this actually should not be nullable. So I'm a little bit surprised we're getting that error. I think the problem here is something to do with how this is typed. We're saying it can be a show books query or undefined. And that I believe is incorrect. Let's see if we can go ahead and fix that one up. 
Actually, this does make sense. I think the problem here is this can be undefined in the case that we have either an error or fetching value. So we can't do much about this. This can potentially be undefined before we finish fetching it. Books, however, is always going to be defined. So that's why we're not getting this typing error down here. And we're actually going to get proper typing down here as well. We have title and ID, and that is pretty neat. The next thing we're going to do is jump down here and delete this definition. We don't need it anymore. And finally, we're going to head over to create book and update this one as well. Again, we don't need this definition anymore. I'm going to delete it. And instead, we're going to go ahead and import our type safe one from generated slash GraphQL. And this one is going to be called create book document. Let's go ahead now and pass it in here, create book document. And this is going to give us type safety as well. You can see down here, we're actually passing in a title. And if we go ahead and delete this one, we are going to get an error. And it's saying here, you need to pass in title. So it's actually correctly recognizing that this requires a title and we're going to go ahead and pass it in. I could pass in the wrong value and it says, no, you can't pass a number. It needs to be a string. And so it does, let's do title.value. We're now getting the correct type definitions and everything here is going to be type safe. So we're definitely where we wanted to end up. We have type safety from the back end all the way to the front end through a series of fairly complicated type generation steps. I'll talk a little bit more about how all this works in more detail in the next video and how to get a better workflow set up. But just to make sure everything is working and finish this one off, let's head over to the app and make sure it's actually behaving correctly. I'm going to refresh this page. We have two books. Let's go ahead and create a new one, create new book, and that is going to work just fine. So we've managed to migrate everything to a type safe front end and as well as a type safe back end.